Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel and to this Coliseum. So let's resume looking at this body that we've been doing in the previous episode, what did you say? So we looked at the boots, which took a lot of time, now we can look at the belt. The hangman's knot is pulled tight by the weight of the corpse below. Yellow, hot-edged polyester cuts into his neck. Above, a sliding buckle ties the belt to the branch. This is a steel reinforced cargo lashing belt, big brother of the regular cargo, uh, cargo belt. It's used for tying cargo under six rotor airships. Don't ask me how I know, but this is a lashing belt used for airlifting cargo. Airlifting? I thought it was used on lorries for strapping cargo to them. Apparently this is the reinforced kind for air transport, my brain tells me so. <laughs> then again, what do I know? I don't even know what an airship is. Okay, 5 XP, nice. He nods. The local arbor uses six rotors to shuffle containers around. I get the sense they used whatever was on hand without paying much attention to not incriminating themselves. Uh, yeah, they probably had just a bunch of stuff around and either somebody's really very good at setting those people up or, you know, they were very bad at doing it. We're assuming dock workers from the harbor did it. Uh, I'm sure they should want him to stay up there. The rope is reinforced with still worrying. How did they even get him up there? Um, we're, assuming they did, we're assuming they did it. I'm still approaching this as a lynching. Yes, motivated by the ongoing strike. He politely, he politely rises an eyebrow. Yo? Uh, makes sense, believably mundane, I feel like it was something else, don't ask me, I'm just lumbering from one moment to the next, <laughs> that's funny. Um, hmm. I mean, it could be something else, but, believably mundane, maybe. 70% of the cases I, uh, I, I get are just filling in the blanks on the initial report, he covers his nose, this belt worries me. Uh, they should have wanted him to stay up there. The rope is reinforced with steel wiring. I was afraid it would be. He rises to inspect the noose. Thin steel wiring, parallel stands. This makes getting him down more problematic than I had assumed. True. Uh, okay. How did they even get him up there? A noose is one of those things that's easier to use one way around. He points to the buckle tying the belt to the branch above. Did they climb up using the kid's ladder? Once the uh, one on the side of the tree. Five experience. That ladder can't carry a grown man. I didn't see any splinters, uh, any splintering either, did you? I think they lassoed the branch, then pulled on the belt to close the buckle. It makes a pulling motion. Could be. The shape of the branch supports the theory. True. You can just throw it like from here, you know, there, and they just pull it so that it buckles up. Okay. Back off and look at the corpse. Uh, what did we get here? Ooh, a lot more, okay. Uh, you're into a preliminary inspection of its different parts. Where is the rest of the armor? As Kuno, okay. <laughs> the kid throwing rocks, okay. Uh, run number of the victim's armor. I use Kim's shortwave, okay. Getting hangman's boots, get uh, boots off victim's feet. Okay. Uh, let's inspect the tattoos. An integrated web of blue lines stretches across the torso from the right shoulder to the solar plexus. Each time they intersect, a small white star is formed in their crossing. Hundreds of fading asterisks riddle his skin. Their concentration is highest around his heart. Is this a map of the night sky? Uh, Microelectronic system. National pattern. Uh, blue lines. Solar plexus each time they intersect, a small white star formed in their crossing. I mean, national pattern, maybe? Of no nation that I know of, if anything it reminds me of religious illumination, last or penultimate century, men who live harsh lives often turn to innocentic worship. But which one? I see no trace of humanoid figure. We're missing something here. I agree. Uh, a sudden ring fills the air as the lieutenant pulls down the zipper of his orange jacket. He wears a white leather belt around his waist and a gun holster under his arm. He takes a thin piece of mil milled aluminum from his coat pocket and pulls it open. Sounds like a sword being unsheet. Uh, a small lens appears. Some sort of camera. What's that? A Trigat Sunshine Mini. Trigat is the world's leading manufacturer of intercommunication devices, primarily projectors. The camera before you looks familiar somehow. <laughs> hey, Kuno, what the, what the heck is that? An instant color camera. It produces two metal clap on poles and clicks them into place uh, on the side of the apparatus. A thin slot shines there. 
I have only two ampoules, so nobody move. I don't want to waste one. He points to the camera, the core spitting into it. The lens needs adjusting. Then, holy hell, that was bright. Triggets, moment, non flammable. Uh, body picture, okay, interesting. Um, a sound, a shrill flash, followed by the breaking of a small ampoule of glass. You see streams of color pour onto the thick, glossy piece of paper rolling out. In case we need it, the lieutenant says and shakes the paper, letting it dry in the cold wind. On it, a color perfect copy of the dead man's tattooed chest. Okay. Cool machine. <laughs> okay. Yes, it slides the camera close and tucks it away on the belt. It's pretty cool, isn't it? Uh, there is only one ampoule left, use it wisely. Okay, we only have one photo left. What do we need this photo for? New task, the victim's tattoos. It contains insight to the victim's person. By this build, I'd say this was a man of physical violence. The story he wanted his body to tell was important to him. Uh, it is his letter to us. Someone should decipher it. We'll need to show it around. Uh, can I have it? I should look at it later without the coarse smell. True. Item gained. Sure, just don't lose it. He hands it a piece of rolled up photo paper. It's no larger than a pack of cigarettes. Uh, okay. Uh, the glassy eyed corpse looks by. His mouth, his mouth mute and his skin as colorful as the chemical rainbow on the photo paper, teeming with opportunistic organisms. Okay. What did that add? Victim's tattoos. Ask around about tattoos' possible meaning. Okay. Uh, look him in the eye. His eyes are milky white and blind to the world, protruding comically from their sockets. There is no one home, just sub-aquatic terrors, uh, terrors there. Dark brown hair grows on his head. His face is ready to explode from organic processes inside. The death's head green has passed. What remains is an unrecognizable mess. Tell me who are you, that man in an empire? Okay, okay, okay. It's a... Uh, 42% and if we put something that gives us more Inland Empire, we can probably actually do it. At least get a higher chance, I would say. Uh, we can probably back off. It's a white check, we can retry it technically. Let's try it, 42%. Ah, it's a fail, that's a shame. The corpse is dead silent, you have no idea why you just said that. <laughs> Who is he? He's a male, 40 to 50, with an athletic build. So we need more Inland Empire. Back off. Uh, squint and take a step back. Okay. Oh, I, I clicked the other one for some reason. So how do you get him down? Uh, are you sure we finished the preliminary, preliminary examination of the caliber? We might miss some of these things once he's down. He stops to think, then checks his notes. Uh, step back and have another look. Okay, yes, I wanted to do this. Uh, squint and take a step back. Uh, as you narrow your eyes, the monster before you blurs into a violent mess of green and pink. This is a trick, you've done it before. Pink is where the blood settled in the first hours of post-mortem. You can use it to see if the corpse has been tampered with. Does his position on the time uh, does this position his position at the time of death match the discoloration? Observe. Only the lower extremities are pink with a dash of blue. His fatted hands ties it in his neck just above the nose. The rest of the corpse appear dark green in the cold spring air. His face and hands are pink, ties too. I see it. He adjusts his glasses. His neck too. The lividity goes right up his chin. We've, we have good, well-pronounced discoloration here. Relax your eyes. The monster comes back into focus. An explosion of color occurs in with dark marble veins. His stomach appears pregnant with something. Black liquid streams down his thigh and onto his boots. So, what do you think? I think he's dead. <laughs> True. I think he was upright after that. Um, his hands, feet, and neck are discolored. Uh, cover your nose. Something is coming out of him. He's beaten up. See the breezes. Uh, I think he's dead. <laughs> well, that's funny. Hopefully, it's not the only one that we get to pick. <laughs> I agree. His personality is no longer part of the world. Totally dead. Uh, the world no longer stories his personality in his composition. There was a time for that and it ended seven days ago. <laughs> no, better not say that. Too heavy, totally. This bastard's not coming back. <laughs> dead the lady, dead, dead, <laughs> What's that anyway? Uh, I like the first one. He nods in agreement with this advanced piece of conceptualization. Having molded over, the lieutenant says, that sounds about right, yes. Uh, I think he was upright after that. His hands, feet and neck are discolored. 
Agreed. He points to the belt, especially on the neck. The belt acted like a tourniquet, uh, keeping the blood in his head. The hypostasis supports a hanging. Yep, seems like lynching to me. I was, could it still be he was moved after that? Uh, uh, I mean... There is always a chance. We should check for ligament marks in his neck to see if they're in tune with the belt. We'll have to get him down first, okay? Something's coming out of him. A pull of blood and feces as eating into the frozen mud below the man's feet. Purged liquid is dripping into it, drop by drop. The, victims, the victim appears to have contained no more than half a kilogram of digestion at the time of that. <laughs> the fuck is that? I'm <laughs> talking about, about, yeah. Uh, we got lucky, maybe went to the toilet sometime before that. <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay, this, this is, uh, this is uh, quite a strong statement and quite a strong reaction to that. Uh, I actually don't know if I want to <laughs> say something like that. I don't want to be like aggressive. This has to do probably with your, uh, like, you know, aggressiveness uh, kind of stats. So, uh, I don't know about that. So let's Let's go with this. Uh, maybe. He doesn't really want to dwell on it too long. True. He's beaten up. See the bruises? I do. Most of them are post-mortem. Maybe even all of them. The delinquents have made our jobs harder with their little sport. Stop talking to riddles, coins lot. <laughs> it means you did get gonna, okay? A brutal like. Alright. Back off and catch your breath. But there's no breath to catch. Only the cadaver filling the air in your nostrils. It slowly rotates before you decomposing. Uh... Hmm. Let's see this. Preliminary, preliminary examination is done. Let's get him down from there. Task complete. Plus 70 experience. So nice. A new skill point. Uh, yeah, we leveled up. Hmm. The steel reinforced belt presents a unique challenge. A botching cutters, but I don't see a good angle of approach to the belt. He doesn't actually think the challenge is unique. I think it's frustrating, annoying, and harder than he thought. New task, getting the body down. The cadaver is a good 1.2 meters up. Neither of, neither one of us can reach the belt without assistance. And even if we do, there is the question of cutting the airship strength material. An acrobatic maneuver would solve this situation. Nothing can go wrong with a good maneuver. <laughs> uh, can someone else do it? We could bring your motor carriage over, cut the belt from the roof. You could saw the branch. Uh, it's like a lot of ass, so let's not do it. Maybe we could shoot him down. And eh, probably not. Maybe we can ask for help from the harbor. More of ideas. Um, can someone else do it? Has someone else? He pauses me like the police. Uh, what was uh, that about processing then? When are they supposed to take care of the boots? Why don't they help? Uh, can the police from processing take care of this? I mean, sure. No. <laughs> Why? Uh, think of the boys from processing as murderers. Only instead of people they murder crime scenes. Processing is a wrecking crew. You know how to commission off items and how to work the incinerator in the morgue. Uh, I know it's hard, but I assure you the others won't come to help us. And we have a growing sanitary concern here. We need to get him down fast. Motor carriage. I thought of that, yes. But the tire tracks will compromise the scene. Any prints will become illegible. That, that's if we get it through the hole in the fence. Also, my MC has sloped roof. It's a sport model. He makes a gesture indicating a harsh degree of sloping. The roof is slippery. An all-around, uh, an all-around bad platform to stand on. How about I take you, take you piggyback? How about I take you piggyback? <laughs> After a moment of silence, he raises an eyebrow. <laughs> the fuck are these pigs talking about? Uh, they're bank or something. <laughs> it's boring. <laughs> I wish they did that. Okay. Uh, is anybody sure you could carry my weight though? You mean rhetorically, right? You're criticizing my idea? Uh, yes, it's not a good idea. Okay, well, at least I I understood. <laughs> it's a largest idea. You two, this thing, get on top of each other and do that. Uh, in silence, the lieutenant gives you a meaningful glance, as if to say case in point. Uh, you can saw the branch. Climb up there and saw the branch. Uh, it seems unclimbable because the ladder is treacherously rotten, but you could use your hands and feet to reach around the tree, then hang from the branch. It's well within my repertoire. Eh. I don't know about that. Honestly, I prefer a non-acrobatic solution here, uh, to this. He looks around, then at you. Why? <laughs> Clown cops climb tree, fall down. He says, from his brow. Enraged cop assault. <laughs> yeah, mm, okay. 
Yeah. Green cup, they like their words, so the branch is sitting on. Look at it, but... Okay. <clears throat> Climb that shit. Uh, you're only making them do those things less. True, very true. Can you see in the future game? <laughs> I'm not afraid of newspapers, we shouldn't be. I'm gonna just let those kids police into not doing our work. That would be a smart thing to say. Um... Uh, uh, what I'm proposing is we save acrobatic traits as a last resort after we've tried everything else. They gotta be the most boring thing I've ever seen. Okay. Uh, maybe we could shoot him down? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Lieutenant remains unaffected. How? Uh, while the buckle ties uh, the rope to the branch, there's a good spot to aim. There, the buckle holds the belt together. Uh... Uh, where? I could ask his glasses. Ah, yes, I see. If the shot hits that, there might be a chance to, uh, to release the belt. Yeah, now we're talking. Uh, they'll miss. They'll miss. Uh, take the thing. What's the worst thing that could happen? Actually, don't. He has a bad idea of written over it. Wait, let me try. Say nothing, let him choose. I don't know how many is better not to. Uh, I mean, I cannot. I definitely don't have any bullets. Um, well, did the shot. I guess. I'll blow his head off. <laughs> take it, take the shot. Yeah, take the shot. <laughs> Silence. With his elbows sharp, the lieutenant unzips his jacket and produces a lightweight firearm. It drops a paper cartridge in, a cartridge in a barrel, separates the scoring stick, and gives the cartridge five tugs. Ooh, are we really doing this? Mm. Securing it in place. That's a kill A990 armistice, a uh, mass produced muzzle loader, acetic frugal, one of the most common firearms in the world. He then steps back and assumes the fall follows test position, taking aim. The corner of his eye twitches, his fingers on the trigger. Uh, he easy does it, partner. He's gonna fucking me. Oh, damn. Kid's voice is drowned in a shrill blast that echoes off the walls of the surrounding tenements. A cloud of smoke slowly parts in the air as the lieutenant steps back and says to himself, Damn it. Okay. A lot of things were wrong with that shot. The fellow's test was the wrong choice. His shoulders were raised, but above all, he cannot trust his eyesight. <laughs> wow, really? I could have hit it easy, but then... <laughs> okay. Uh... Uh, it's okay, man. Yeah. I'm well, not sorry too, gonna feel sorry for the panic. Okay. The lieutenant doesn't say a word, he just looks at the gun in his hand. Uh, try again, maybe? Breakthrough imminent, okay. Uh, no, we're lucky as it is. We didn't break anything, and the victims remain uncompromised. He looks around as the windows overlooking the yard. Any more mistakes who put us in an unfortunate position with the locals. We have eyes on us. I didn't do us any favor with that. Okay. Uh, I don't want to say that. What well, now? I have to say, it's beginning to look unlikely we can get him down without assistance. Yeah, you know, you don't feel like too bad of uh, a shot yourself. Hmm. 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 I don't know. I mean, we cannot, but. Can I have the thing I should try? Uh. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, it's bad as it is, I shoot in fire almost like punks, he pauses, then shrugs and proceeds to load the pistol out. Go ahead, I'm not stopping you, just don't lose it. Peace shines in his outstretched hand. <laughs> they only have one. <laughs> this is the sorry sparrow. <laughs> oh, thanks. Okay, take it. Uh, A9 arms this, okay. Yeah, take it. Uh, take it in the... Mm, okay. Uh, fill the weight first. Uh, the cold piece of bakelite and gun metal is surprisingly light. Your finger fits right through the guard, instinctively resting on the trigger. You've held this, uh, A9 arms test before. At some point, it probably used to be your choice of firearm. It still feels comfortable, like you never laid it down. <laughs> what are you waiting for? Uh, point it. Okay. The buckle comes into focus in your sight. You stand with your feet planted firmly in the ground, and your left hand supporting your uh, that other uh, arm. Why don't you just do that? Okay, Jesus. At least you won't miss. Uh, okay, shut up. Or, ooh, it's a red check, and it's only forty-two percent for hand-eye coordination. Uh, okay. Uh, first, they shut up, definitely. Or oh, what? <laughs> you gonna do that? Her voice is almost a whisper now. Uh huh. Interesting. Um, 
close your left eye first. Okay. Oh, I can I can actually point at her. Ah, do I want to? I don't know if I want to. That's probably not the best idea, but it sounds like a funny option, though. Uh, close your left eye, I guess. Uh, I feel of your narrows. The branch slowly moves, becoming entirely two-dimensional. The metal buckle glimmers, catching the morning light as the corpse slowly rotates. The slow movement of the branch in the wind and your shoulders directing the gun sink up, dancing hypnotically. Look, he's crying. You gonna cry now? Uh, ooh, branch movement analyzed. Okay, so that took it to 58%. Point it at her. I want to see what this does. <laughs> Uh huh. Sweet, set me free. Don't. You feel the lieutenant hand on your shoulder. <laughs> She's ripping her braces open to very chest. Do it. Uh. Oh, you actually can. Holy. If you have composure. Eh. Uh, no, just point it at the bell. That's okay. Uh, with this gun, she pa she pants, breathless with excitement. It wasn't intense; it was pathetic. Uh, responded to provocation, got it a minus one, minus one. Damn, damn! I shouldn't have done that. No, let's give it back. Let's give it back. The tenant takes the gun carefully from your host, uh, from you, and holster it. Is that narrows it and doesn't comment on your antics? Uh, what about the body? Task updated. Uh, we need to access the arbor and ask the leader of the union to have it taken down. They have the tools and they have the man. Why didn't we just begin with that? I didn't want us to be indebted to ever Claire. I wanted us to be able to deal with it ourselves. That is clearly not the case. We need help. <laughs> you need to... Okay. <laughs> Why am I still... Uh, what's wrong with being indebted? Uh, it's a dangerous and corrupt man. We cannot predict what he will want from us in return. Okay. Leave. That's the thought. Jamais vous. Realization. Jamais vous. The opposite of déjà vu. Not already seen, but never seen. Everything that should be familiar appears strange and new, like some half-forgotten day in your childhood. Only now. That's the feeling you've been having. And for who knows how long. You should go and ask. Joyce Messier about this. Joyce Messier, okay. What world okay. are we in? This is a fundamental question. Okay, okay. This is interesting. Bonuses. Oh, plus one XP for every orb clicked. All intellect learning caps raised by one. That's actually not that bad. I mean, one XP is not a lot, obviously, but but it's a nice thing that we got here. Okay, okay. Uh, so we've got getting the body down, access the arbor and ask Ever Claire help, okay? And done is inspect the body's victim, okay? Then we have interactable objects, the picture, interact. Uh, it's an integral web with little blue lines stretched across the torso of the hand man from the right shoulder to the solo. Uh, yeah, we saw, we read all that before. Pattern still kind of has an Ethnic feel to it, but nothing familiar. Who are you? Gone. What's the meaning of this tattoo? For you to discover, you've gone as far as you will without assistance. Someone who knows about history could tell you history. Okay. Okay. And uh, we have a uh, skill points, but I guess I'm gonna save it for the next episode. I guess we're gonna start the next episode by putting, you know, the skill point on. As for now, as always, thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye!